brothers and sisters, may God bless you. May God keep you safe. A brotherly hug to you all in the Lord. And may this year, 2021, be of great success and of great blessings from God to all of you. And above all, just as what we will talk about in today's teaching, we may draw nearer to Him with all of our hearts because He definitely shows us that by His hand and only with Him we can obtain triumph. The Bible states in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, Moses is speaking about that great commandment, which is that God wants and that it was important for everyone to keep in mind, and it states as such. In Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse number 5, God had been speaking to them. Moses had gathered the entire people and he speaks to them about uh, statutes, about the way to please God. And he gives them the Ten Commandments and he tells them, he's speaking here in this chapter 6 about this great commandment. The great commandment is, starting in verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Meaning he's repeating to them that there is only one God. There is, we should only think about him and how to please him. And it states in verse number 5, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And that's where that title comes from, this great commandment. The key to success to each and every one of you, to each and every one of us, is to truly love God. But to love Him how? As it states here, with all your heart. What does that mean? Just as it also states here, with all your soul in a redundant way, meaning with all of your strength. You see, it's not enough to just say to God, God, I love you, I love you, I love you. If it's not accompanied with works, we must sacrifice our flesh, our lust. How sad it is that during the end of the year, many of those who are listening, even though I, I hope not, you gather you were able to gather with your family members, maybe some got drunk, and you displeased God because you're excited, it's the end of the year, and you forget that you're children of God, and that because you want to spend time with your family, that because you don't want them to think that you're a fanatic or someone who exaggerates, then you stoop down to their level and you end up, for example, getting drunk. Or you end up, you know, with omens on the 31st, putting on certain type of clothes, certain colors, or maybe grabbing luggage and going around the block with the luggage so that you may travel a lot the following year. And all of these omens, all of this displeases God or eating 12 grapes, or you're eating ears of corn, or, or bathing yourself with certain herbs so that, you know, things go well for you. For things to go well for you and I, I'm going to give you the secret. Love God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. That is our secret to be able to triumph, to be able to be winners. Because what would God say of us if you gave in? Or how many of you behaved a certain way and wanted to please God in every way, but at the end of the year came and you forgot all about it. You forgot your spiritual posture, your spiritual identity. That's why 
it is important, brothers and sisters, to love God with all of our heart, which means that out of that love for God, you stop doing many things that maybe your flesh asks of you or that your family asks of you. But you must have that spiritual posture, that spiritual identity that for you, first is God, second God, third God. That's why God states, and how beautiful are these words here, and with all your heart, it can't just be halfway. If you give yourself to God, it must be with all of your heart for God to see that our main driving force is Him. For Him to, to know that when we open our eyes, we're thinking about Him. That when we go to sleep, we are thinking about Him. That throughout the day, we're thinking about Him. We keep Him in our minds, in our hearts, because we are children of God. And we want to please God in every way. That's why when it states here, with all your soul, it means that you feel it, that you never deny that you are a child of God. That you are truly becoming a true Christian. That you want to please God. And notice what it states here. And with all your strength, it can't just be with half of your strength. No, it can't just be with a little bit. No, you must put devotion into it. Put excitement, passion for the things of God. Not for people to call us fanatics and that we're always naming God, but yes, that that we're using all of our strength to, to not sin, to keep so many things. But look at all these reflections, all these sermons, which are so beautiful that we have received. That's for you to apply them in your life with all your strength. And if you apply this in your life, God says, this, He loves me, she loves me. And when you pray to Him and you cry out to Him, for 2021 so that things go well for you so that you may prosper then God is going to bless you because you are have shown it to him with your works with your deeds by getting rid of all those omens and that that old man let's say so God is going to reward you God is going to give a triumph because God is great and powerful blessed be our God that is why what a great commandment what a commitment for all of you and for me. That is why God tells us something. His great commandment to love Him above all things, above ourselves. Our own self-interest. Sometimes we want to allow ourselves to be ruled by our flesh. And it's almost like we're subdued by it. But if we do this with all of our strength, then that love for God will always prevail. And for that love of God, I'm going to stop sinning. I'm going to leave many things behind. Because I am showing Him that I love Him. It states in Proverbs chapter 3, the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It states, trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does that mean? That we must trust in God. Yes, trust in the fact that Walking by God's hands, I am going to triumph because I trust in Him. But with all my heart, I don't doubt if God made me a promise, then it's going to be so. Just as He said that this pandemic is going to pass away, it's going to be so. Look, the vaccines already started in some countries. Soon is going to reach every country. That's how it's going to be. And we are in God's hands, whether it works or not. And let's hope that it works so that everything can go back to being the same, uh, the economy. And we may be able to congregate once again in our churches to praise you, O Lord, to glorify you. Today, I received an audio from a little girl who cried out to God like that, saying, God, we want to congregate again with all the other brothers and sisters. We need the churches to be reopened. That's why end this pandemic. What a beautiful prayer. What a wonderful prayer from a little girl who was praying to God for this. That we must trust in the Lord with all our hearts without doubting. And that's how it should be. And it states, and lean not in your own understanding. Because there are people who think that they consider themselves very capable and that only with their own knowledge and that everything they have is because they're very capable. 
But instead, we should remember that we owe everything to God. And that is why we ought to give everything to Him, to God, to our God. He, to Him, trust in the Lord with all your heart. This means that we must learn to trust more in God, to know that everything comes from Him. It states in Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 58, I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Remember that the reflection, the teaching from today is that it's with our whole heart to do everything with our whole hearts, meaning with sincerity. Because I want to please you, O Lord. So it states, I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. And God has taught us that if we seek him, if we follow him, then he would be with us. His presence in our lives, giving us blessings, giving us peace, giving us harmony, giving us that hope to continue onward. Because by His hand, we will achieve it all in our financial life, in our love life. There are many families. How many families having difficulties, problems between husband and wife or with their children? But perhaps this is what they're lacking, crying out to God with all of their heart. For God to have mercy on all His promises He's made so that that promise may reach you. And remember that it states that we read that we should love God with all your heart. It's not just halfway, brothers and sisters. God is very zealous when it comes to that. He doesn't accept that we love Him halfway. God doesn't accept that you accept some things but not others. That's why I want to go back to this time of the end of the year and many people forget that they should please God and that if they make mistakes, they think, that oh, everything is going to be forgiven quickly, but you can lose blessings. That is why we ought to always pray to God, ask Him for His presence, for Him to be with us, for Him to always give us the strength to continue moving onward so that we don't fall because we are with Him. And look at this reflection from many people and it states here I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies if anyone fell once again if every, anyone made a mistake fell because of traditions or omens because of family God tells them consider your ways it says, I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimony. Yes, Lord, I want to go back to your ways. So the most beautiful part is when it states here in verse 60, I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. But that part, to keep, is not just knowing them. You know, not to steal, kill, fornicate, meaning I shouldn't sin. But I keep them, I put them into practice to show God that I love Him with all of my heart. No matter how much my flesh or my friends or my family entice me to sin, to do things contrary to what God tells me. No, I'm not going to give in because I am with God. I'm not going to fall because I have God, because I love Him, because I live for Him and because of Him. And that's when God sees all of this. And that is when God rewards us and blesses us. Because it states, this person thought about his ways. And it states here, I made haste. And did not delay. What does that mean? That you understood that you made a mistake. So set your life in order before God. Change. Change. Strive. That is why everything is with effort. And keep your commandments means we must keep His commandments. Our God's commandments meaning His ordinances, His statutes, His laws. We must keep have all of that cleared so that we must please Him and make haste. It's not, oh, I know 
but okay, it's not. It's 2021, so I'll do this in 2022. No, it's now. We're starting a new year, and my goal is to please you. My goal is to read the Bible. My goal is to receive spiritual gifts. But Lord, help us, Lord, by removing this pandemic. Help us so that the churches may be open once again so that we may make more time for you and worship you and praise you the way you expect from each and every one of us. All of that is what we must say to the Lord. And lastly, it states in Psalm, in the same Psalm 119, because there are many verses which are beautiful, but notice how beautiful this verse is in verse 34. So in verse 34, it states, Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Meaning, give me understanding. Give me the ability to understand, to know. But to know what? It stays here, and I shall keep your law. So, meaning to know the law of God, the doctrine, the gospel. It states... In the second part of this same verse 34, it states, Indeed, I shall observe it with, with what? With my whole heart. What does that mean? That you and I must fulfill it. Observe it. But not because I have to. Oh, on the 31st, I wanted to get drunk with all of my family, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it, and but I felt bad. No, then you're not doing it with all your heart. Oh, I wanted to eat the 12 grapes and ask for a wish for each grape, but I didn't do it because, oh, Lord, but my family was looking at me and I didn't know what to do. So I ate them all at once. You didn't do it with all of your heart. Oh, Lord, I... I stopped drinking and I wanted to get drunk, but I only drank one or two shots. But in the end, I wanted to continue drinking and drinking. And now I feel bad because I didn't do it. Then you didn't do it with all of your heart. When you do things with all your heart, you end up feeling happy, feeling joyful. Joyful because you know that you're doing it for God. That's the person who does it for God. And that's why you stop sinning. That's why you stop the lust. That's why you feel free to please God. But the enemy is always going to send those darts, those thoughts, so that we may doubt what we have done. But God rewards loyalty. God rewards when we love Him with all of our hearts, when we keep His statutes, His decrees, when we delight ourselves doing the will of God. And God is, will end up rewarding you. God will give you triumph. That's why it's important to know His commandments. In verse 33, notice what it states. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Meaning, teach me. Give me understanding of your word, of your gospel. O Lord, it states, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Yes, it is important that God... For God to teach us that we may have the ability to do so through the sermons, through the Bible studies, through the reflections, through the written word, just as the Bible is. And then unless God um, gives us a vision or through a dream or through a sermon, through experiences that he may allow us to know more of him and his gospel and his doctrine... And we can truly understand that we are learning and that we want to know His doctrine because we want to apply it in our lives. And it states in verse 35, Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Yes, Lord, guide my life, my path, because I know that your will is perfect, because I know that you want the best for me. For my loved ones. That's why Lord bless me O Lord. And protect me. And I will do everything with all my heart. Because I love you O Lord. With all of my strength. I will always give the best that I have for you. Amen and amen. Let us pray my brothers and sisters. God of glory. Good father. You are great and wonderful. Look O Lord for us human beings. 
we have ended a year called 2020 where it wasn't easy we saw your hand your whip through this virus but now we begin a new year and we are waiting your mercy that it may be great and powerful that's why I extend your powerful arm healing the brothers and sisters who are sick anyone listening to us who is sick heal them O oh Lord protect us all from this virus protect us from this problem O oh Lord and help us O oh Lord in every aspect in our financial aspect to continue forward to uh, be able to administer whatever literal much money we receive to give it the honor O oh Lord for those who have their businesses prosper them O oh Lord help them for everyone all of us to be good employees and that you may bless them greatly, O oh Lord. You are great, O oh Lord. And our sister Maria Luisa, O oh Lord, with all of your, our heart, we ask, bless her, give her many years of life, protect her, O oh Lord, that we may have our sister Maria Luisa for many more years teaching us as she has been doing so. How beautiful, how wonderful that is, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, for everything. Bless your church. Bless all of our brothers and sisters, everyone who was listening, help us be happy and triumph in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm.